Hi, welcome to the second lesson of the ESP32 Pixel series. In this lesson, I will show you how to display arbitrary graphics on the pixel display and use the touch function to make a small drawing board. First, we find the code for lesson 2 in the course files and open it. If you don't know where to download the course files, you can open the Alinit website and click on the wiki page. In the upper right corner of the wiki page, there is the Alinit GitHub entrance. I will put all the course materials on GitHub so that it is easy to update at any time, and it is also convenient for you to download it. Then go back to the Arduino IDE, the code is already open. But before we start, we need to install two libraries we need. The first one is the Lovian GFX library, which is a graphics library that can help us drive the screen and display any text and pattern on the screen. Before using the Lovian GFX library, we also need to configure the display and touch driver interfaces. The driver interface code is provided by Lovian GFX, which I put in the gfx.config.h file. We only need to fill in some pin information in the driver interface code. But before that, let's install the Lovian GFX library first. Click the third icon in the toolbar to open the library manager and search for Lovian GFX in the search box. The default selection is the latest version 1.2.0, so don't modify it and install it. After the installation is complete, click this icon again to close the library manager. Next, let's take a look at how to configure the driver interface in the gfx underscore config.h file. First, we need to declare two constants according to the resolution of the display. The resolution of pixel is 800 times 480, which we have declared here. These two constants will be used in the interface code of the display driver. We have to let the display driver know the resolution of the screen, otherwise the position will not be correct when displaying. Next, let's look at the driver interface code, which still belongs to the display part. From D0 to D15, they correspond to different I.O. ports, and there are comments saying B3, G2, R3, etc. How to understand this? Don't panic, listen to me and explain it to you slowly. Let's open the schematic of the pixel board first. We need to refer to it when configuring the driver interface code. In the course file, open file, find the schematic, and then open it. In the Arduino IDE, you will see that these I.O. ports are divided into three parts, namely B, G, and R. In fact, they correspond to the three primary colors, blue, green, and red. We know that all colors are composed of these three colors, and the colors in our display are the same. However, in the display, there is another parameter called color depth, which refers to the color range that the screen can display. The color depth of the pixel board's display is 16 bits. Among them, there are 5 bits for blue, 6 bits for green, and 5 bits for red, so the protocol used by our display can be called RGB565. Next, let's see how the display in the circuit diagram is connected to the chip. Scroll down and find the RGB underscore LCD section you will find that the display actually supports RGB888 and the color depth should be 24 bits. But in order to save IO, we chose to reduce the color depth and ground the low bit pins. Okay, after understanding this, let's first see that our three corresponds to the IO45 pin in the Arduino IDE. But the RGB underscore LCD section is not marked. We can scroll up and find the MCU section. Here you can see that R3 is connected to the IO45 pin. That is to say, when we configure the display driver interface code, we need to make sure that the pins used in the circuit diagram are consistent with the pins used in the code. Next, let's take a look at the R4 pin, which is connected to IO48. It can be found in the circuit diagram that it is indeed connected to the IO48 pin. I will not give examples of the remaining color pins one by one, because I believe that you, as a smart person, must have understood the principle. As long as you find the corresponding pins, by comparing the code and the schematic diagram, 
you will understand how it works. In addition to the pins related to color, there are some pins related to enable and clock, which can also be found in the circuit diagram. The frequency of writing data is the highest frequency I have tested. Please do not modify it, otherwise the screen will be distorted. The following values are set according to the parameters of the screen, so you don't need to pay attention to them. The small section in the middle is related to the backlight of the screen, but you will find that I filled in minus 1 here for the backlight control pin. This is because in order to save I.O. ports, I put the backlight control pin on the extended I.O. chip, so that the backlight is not controlled by the backlight driver code of the Levy and GFX library, but by the code we wrote ourselves. The model of this expansion I.O. chip is PCA9557 PW. The second library we need to install later is to drive it. Next, let's look at the driver interface of the touch screen. Our touch screen uses the iSuperscript 2C protocol, which uses the two pins SDA and SCL, so we need to tell the driver interface which two I.O. ports are connected to SDA and SCL. We can find them in the circuit diagram. Here is the touch data reading frequency, which does not need to be too high, because we may use other I2C devices in future projects. If the touch reading and writing frequency is too high, it will occupy more time of the I2C bus, which is not conducive to the operation of other I2C devices. 0x14 is the I2C address of the touch screen. The address of each I2C device needs to be fixed and unique, so do not modify this address, otherwise the touch will fail. Okay, that's all about configuring the screen display and touch driver interface. Next, let's take a look at the code in the Eno file. If we want to use the gfx underscore config.h file we just configured, we also need to include it in the Eno file, otherwise an error will be prompted during compilation. Then, there is also a header file called PCA9557, which is provided by the second library we need to install. It can help us drive the expansion IO chip more conveniently. But this library can't find the version I want in the Arduino IDE, so we need to install it manually. Open the course file and find the libraries folder. I will put all the libraries used in the course that need to be manually installed in this folder. The manual installation process is very simple. We just need to copy the library to be installed to the library directory of the Arduino IDE. Go back to the IDE, click File. Open Preference, this path is the library directory path of the IDE, we copy it, paste it here, and jump to where the path points. This library's folder is the library directory of the IDE, we open it. You can see that the Lovey and GFX library we just installed is also stored here, which means we have found the right place. Next, just copy the PCA9557 library file to complete the installation. Next, go back to the IDE. Here I declare a class to drive the expansion IO chip. Next, look at the setup function to see what I told the pixel to do after powering on. First, I use the begin function of the serial port to initialize the serial port with a baud rate of 115,200. Next, this part is to initialize I2C, which controls the expansion I.O. module to send the required initialization timing to the touch screen. Please do not delete this part, it is very important. Then continue to control I.O. 3 of the expansion I.O. module to turn on the screen backlight. You may ask, why is it a high level? You need to find the answer from the schematic diagram. Open the schematic diagram, scroll down, and find the BL underscore CTL part. You can see that this part is a very classic common emitter amplifier circuit. What controls the on and off of this circuit is our backlight pin, which is IO3 on the expansion chip. When the BL pin is at a low level, the upper and lower ends of the transistor are not conducting, and the display driver chip below is also not enabled. At this time, the backlight of the screen is not bright. When the BL pin is at a high level, the upper and lower ends of the transistor are conducting, the display driver chip below will also be enabled, 
and the backlight of the screen will be lit. If you still don't understand, you can first learn about the use of transistors. Okay, that's it for how to use the extended I.O. chip to control the backlight. Next, let's see how to use the Lovey and GFX library to display patterns and text on the screen. The parts once selected are all the codes for operating the display. First, it is initialized, using the begin function to initialize the display and fill the entire screen with black. Then it sets the text size, and finally, it delays for 100 milliseconds. This process is very short, and we cannot observe it. But later I filled the entire screen with color again, and there was a one second interval after each filling. So we can easily observe this effect. Then, fill circle was used to fill a circle with a radius of 50 at the screen X coordinate of 100 and the Y coordinate of 100 and the color was yellow. You can adjust these parameters at will to draw a circle of your favorite size and color. Then, the set cursor function is used to set the cursor position. The cursor position is the initial position of the text printing, so after the next print function is executed, the text will start printing at the x coordinate of 200 and the y coordinate of 240. Of course, these parameters are also determined by you, including the printed text, which can be modified at will. In addition, you can search Lovey and GFX in Google to find the GitHub address of this library. Scroll down and you will see an introduction to all the functions of this library, which will help you understand the powerful functions of this library and help you design more beautiful interfaces. Next, let's look at what is done in the loop function. First, two variables are declared. The getTouch function is used to determine whether a touch event has occurred on the touch screen. When a touch event occurs, the getTouch function will pass the x coordinate and y coordinate of the touch to these two variables. At the same time, the return value of the getTouch function is true and is passed to the variable touched. Then, when a touch occurs, the condition of the if statement is met and the code inside is executed using fill circle to fill a circle with a radius of 10 at the coordinates where the touch occurs. Finally, the coordinates where the touch occurs are printed out through the serial port. It is worth noting that all the codes in the loop function are repeatedly executed, so when my finger draws a line on the touch screen, will these white circles also be connected into a line, just like a drawing board? So let's upload the code to the board to see the effect. Before uploading the code, connect the pixel board to the computer using a USB-C cable and turn on the power switch. Then go back to the IDE and configure the compilation environment. I have already explained the configuration process in the first lesson. If you are still not sure how to configure it, please read the content of the first lesson first. Click Tools, find ESP32 S3 Dev Module in Boards, and select it. Then, find the port number corresponding to the pixel board in the port item and select it. Then, find huge app in the partition scheme item and select it. Finally, in the PSRAM item, select OPI SRAM. Be sure to make sure that the compilation environment is configured, otherwise the code may not run properly after being uploaded to the board. Now, we click the upload button in the upper left corner to upload the code to the pixel board. Because the upload process is quite long, I will speed up this part of the screen. When the code is uploaded, we can see that the pixel board will automatically reset, and then it will run as we expected. When the code in the setup function is finished running, it will stay on this screen. At this time, when we touch the screen with our hands, the screen will draw a small white circle where the touch occurs. When I draw a line on the screen, the small white circles become connected into lines. This is really interesting. Okay, the content of this class is over here. If you have any questions, you can post in the forum and I will reply to you as soon as I see it. If you think this class is helpful to you, please give me a like. Thank you for watching. See you next time.